This edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by Freekeen.com. What happened to you on uh, on February? Uh, I guess it was February second. Yeah. At Mil at Milford District Court. Yeah, Lauren, Jim, and I we went down to the Mike Barsky trial, and I didn't have anything planned. We were just going down there and showing up, and, you know, moral support for him in the courtroom. There was eight of us. We sit we sit out there for half an hour, four times, and went in there. They didn't allow video cameras, and they were. Not, they were pretty cold with us when we first opened the door. So we sat in the waiting room when our time was up, our time for the courtroom came. We started walking in. There was a, before then we saw a little thing on the door that said no hats and we was kind of making jokes about it. And I guess a couple weeks ago we went to Lauren's uh, GMP hearing and they didn't allow hats either, but they allowed, we already sat down before the thing started. And so we just asked us to take off our hats and that was fine. But I thought it was kind of silly and I wear my hat everywhere, and it's not offensive to anybody, I wouldn't think. So, so uh, Jesse walked in there, and just a couple feet into the door, they arrested him for that. And I never walked in. I just went. Then I just I asked this guy about the same time. So why do you have this hat ban? Why why do you ban hats? Seems to be, and he pointed this thing on the door. Well, he, at first he said. I'm going to talk to you later when I'm not busy with this man, arresting this man and everything. He was kind of on-looking, and was, there was tons of bailiffs around, and they're getting, they were overreacting, I think, and they were just going wild about this uh, arrest. And so I stood off to the side where he said I should wait. Another a lawyer came up, and he, he kind of talked to me about this hat thing, and then he kind of left, and, and finally when the bailiff was ready to talk to me, he walked over there, and I, I started initiating conversation. And... Yes. So I asked, uh, so what's the reason? He points to the thing on the door saying, there's a rule on the door saying that hat should be banned. And, and he, he ordered me to take off my hat right there. I was still in the waiting room. I thought that was pretty odd. And he was, he was cold. I just didn't want to obey his orders right then. So I said, are you ordering? I mean, I was trying to keep the conversation going. Are you ordering me? And he said, he didn't respond to that. And then I asked another question like, can you explain some kind of reasons for it? And he kind of just said, oh, it's the judge's reason. I mean, the judge can choose what they want in their courtroom. And then he, he was more threatening this time. He said, I should take off my hat or leave. He actually told me to leave if I didn't take off my hat. And I said, are you threatening me? And he didn't respond to that right away. And I, I, I did feel threatened, so I said, I feel threatened I have that. And then this man came outside. He opened the door from the inside the courtroom, and he said, you assaulted that man. He accused me of it. He said, you assaulted that man. And I didn't assault anyone. And I told him that. I said, I didn't assault you. I didn't assault this man. And I was three feet away, away from him, and I didn't even touch him. So, and then he said, you need to move. You, they were, they were, he was yelling as well, and angry and cool. He didn't try to explain any of his reasons for anything. And it, it was just, it was all hectic. And I said, no, if you want me to move, you have to move me yourself. So two other bailiffs caught behind me. They pushed me against the wall and slapped handcuffs to me and take me to where Jesse was sitting in a room nearby. And I think they arrested me for, they thought I was going to do the same thing as Jesse. They kind of, it was kind of this policy that if Jesse did something, I always did as about to do the same thing, but I never did it. And so they didn't have any reason to arrest me. Now, it was, it was bailiffs that arrested you, not Milford PD? Did Milford PD have any role in what happened to you? Yeah, when I was in the office, uh, 10 minutes later or so, I don't, I'm not sure, the uh, uh, PD officer took me to his cop car, the Milford PD. I didn't tell them my age right away. I guess I looked like a juvenile, so I went in there. And they were, at first they were trying to get me to give information. And I asked for laws. I mean, what, what reason do you, get, what reason do you have to need this information? And I wanted to know where it goes, if it's going to go to a national database. They, we were going through this for quite a while, and I wouldn't kind of budge right away because I, I wanted these laws, and I, they weren't listening to me. They were kind of 
making our excuses and finally Sam says, we don't have enough time to do that. She takes out the law book, kind of slips through it and then says to me, you don't have time to do this, is the prosecutor. And, you uh, know, we, we talked about other things as well. And I finally said, uh, they're saying they're going to take me to jail and whatnot. They're going to give me, they're going to tell me to do the same things there. And I just thought, I, I, I just gave the information then. I gave it over and then they, they told me they just wanted my name, my address, and my hair color and weight and some basic things like that. I mean, they're still bad to give over, but I gave them. But they never told me about fingerprints or mug shots, and I had no clue that they were going to do that. And they took me downstairs to do that, and then, so I already have, gave half the information open, and they kind of, so they were just being really, if they were saying I was uncooperative, they were being uncooperative with me. They weren't. They were trying to communicate with me. They were trying to explain their reasons or anything. They were just pushy and ordering me around. Well, now, did you? Um, I understand uh, you didn't bring this up yourself. I, I see, but uh, some other folks have said that you were uh, you were physically hurt somewhat during the arrest process. Is that true? Yes, I, I was pushed against the wall. I hit my jaw first, and did not. Uh, that just surprised me that they were. I mean, I just kind of remember that they just said I was accused of assaulting somebody. And I just felt like these were like lawless hypocrites. That's right. That's what I thought, and. I, when I was taken into the office, I was just sitting there like stunned and I, I cried there and kind of throughout the thing when I was taken into the cop car, just, which arrested, uh, like, and I was just, I was amazed and I was crying and they were just pretty rough with me, I thought, so. Uh, but that was the only thing that, that, that hurt was your, your jaw? Did they do anything else? Yeah, I think that's pretty pretty typical cop mo. Um, all right, um, can you think of uh, th anything else to add uh, in terms of what happened? Uh, that was my first arrest and <laughs> first kind of talk with the bailiff. So, all yeah, right. That was a good reason to be surprised. I don't know. But Milford PD wasn't involved in this until after you were arrested. Yeah. Okay. Um, Thanks, Riley. Yeah, do you have anything, well, do you have any message, I mean, for folks, what what would you want folks to do? How do you hope that what happened to you, you know, affects others? I want to go to the Grand, I don't know about the way I can do to help others. I did wish they kind of had the laws on a, on a wall or something right there, at least I knew about the laws. I wish we either have a, like, a police class, I want to start, Mike Barsky, I knew was talking about starting a, uh, a training class so we know how to do as police and know what laws we need to know and things because I didn't know any of that. That would have been nice. And for other people who don't know these things, that would be nice for them. I wasn't planning on being arrested that day, so it was surprising for me. And also I want to take this to the grand jury and kind of like press them for charges. I think Sam, I am one to help me with that. So. Okay. Well, Charlie, I appreciate your time and I appreciate you uh, taking a stand even though I guess you didn't plan on being arrested. All right, take care. Yep. Bye. I guess the, I, after, after all this happened, I called the Milford District Court to try and get comment as to whether this had happened, what had happened, why it happened. Uh, they wouldn't tell me anything um, except that I could come in and look at their records if I wanted to. They wouldn't grant me an interview. They wouldn't confirm or deny anything. They hung up on me. So anyway, this is Dave Ridley signing out for RidleyReport.com this February 5th, 2009. This program is brought to you by Freekeen.com. Freekeen.com features audio, video, and blogs chronicling the transition to a voluntary society. Freekeen.com also has comments and discussion forums so you can be heard. Freekeen.com.